द ब्लेस्ड हैमलेट बांकुरा दो इट बिलोंग्स टू द फर्टाइल प्रोविंस ऑफ वेस्ट बंगाल इज कंपेरेटिवली बैरन एंड सब्जेक्ट टू फ्रिक्वेंट फमाइन बट द लिटिल विलेज ऑफ जयरामबाती लाइंग एट द साउथ ईस्ट कॉर्नर ऑफ द डिस्ट्रिक्ट इज मोर फॉर्चुनेट एंड एवर स्माइल्स विद द क्रॉप्स ऑफ पैडी व्हीट शुगर केन एंड वेजिटेबल्स विच द इंडस्ट्रियस फार्मर्स ग्रो इन इट्स फील्ड्स इट इज अबाउट थ्री माइल्स वेस्ट ऑफ कमरपुकुर द नेटिव विलेज ऑफ श्री रामाकृष्णा एंड इज अंडर द सिरोमानीपुर आउटपोस्ट ऑफ द मेन पुलिस स्टेशन एट कोतुलपुर विद इन द विष्णुपुर सब डिविजन ऑफ द डिस्ट्रिक्ट From the northwestern corner of the hamlet the small perennial rivulet Amodar with its transparent water meanders eastward for a mile like a playful child demarcating the northern limits of Jairambati then taking a southeasterly turn it washes the boundary of Mukundapur which forms a part of Kamarpukur and then flows southward the narrow and shallow stream forms were pools here and there which are deep and full of fish so that small alligators are often attracted there in the northern side of the village the streamlet forms a beautiful peninsula triangular in shape and raised in the center the green grass and tall trees which cover it make it a cool retreat for those who want a shelter from the day's heat and the solitude is heightened by the signs of cremation here and there inviting those who are sick of the worries of the world resounding with the chirping of birds and decorated with fruit and flower trees as it was it was a favorite place for swami sardananda yoginma golapma and others who after a dip in the brook sat under the amlika emblic myrobalan tree which adorned its center in those days and there they meditated or read the gita or the chandi for a considerable time The mother in her younger days took her ceremonial bath in this stream on special days. The natural situation of Jairambati is very fine. It is surrounded almost on all sides by extensive fields. The land between the Amodar and the village is about half a mile in width and is very fertile. Such staple crops as paddy, pulses, chili and turmeric as well as ordinary vegetables are raised on this and adjacent lands by a diligent peasantry whose wants are few cotton too used to be cultivated and the ponds had plenty of fish it is said that the hamlet began to have such abundance only after the birth of the holy mother it had then no shops and yet the people did not depend on other villages they were satisfied with what they got from their fields whenever necessity arose they went to the market at kamarpukur which supplied them with sweets or to kotulpur 6 miles to the north from where they got clothes salt and spices or to kaipak badanganj 5 or 6 miles to the southwest at shehar or shiord as it is locally pronounced 1 mile to the west there were some grocers shops and there was another at pukure about a mile and a half away which helped the people of jairambati in an emergency north of jairambati on the other side of the amodar and across a vast field is a large village called desra pronounced as deshda on the east to across a vast stretch of paddy fields one comes to the bank of the amodar after crossing which one has to pass through amarpur to reach kamrapukur the track has now been made wider and easier for traffic and it is dotted on either side by big shady trees under which the cowboys and pedestrians can take rest or shelter the mukhopadhyaya or briefly mukherji family in which the holy mother was born settled in this village long ago apart from these mukherjis and the banarjis who are related to the former there is no brahman family there The rest of the villagers are non-Brahmans bearing such family titles as Vishwas, Mandal, Ghosh and Samui. The Brahmans together with a few families of milkmen, one of barbers, one of sweetmeat makers, one of blacksmiths and a few families of Bagdis inhabit about a hundred small mud houses where they live their unostentatious rural life. 
We are not aware of any indisputable theory about the origin of the name of the village, though one may guess that it might have been derived from the name of the tutelary deity or of an ancestor of the Mukherjee's. The villagers used to bathe in and draw their drinking water from the big tank with tall palm trees on its banks called the Badujapukur or the tank of the Banarjis in the southern part of the village. Further south there is an ancient tank with blooming lotuses. On the western side of the village is a big tank called the Ahir on which the cultivators depend for water for irrigation. An old pond called the Punyapukur occupies a central position. On its western bank is the new house of the Holy Mother, built in 1916. On that bank again at the northern side is a small thatch opening to the south which is the old chapel of the Mukherjee's. In one of its rooms there is an emblem of the deity dharma one called Sundaranarayana, which is of the form of a tortoise and which the Mukherjee's worship by turns. The other room is called the Kalimado where the goddess Kali used to be worshipped every year. This worship ceased subsequently as a result of family differences. In this room, again, sat the village school where the little boys and girls gathered, with leaves for writing under their arms and crisp scorched rice, mudi, for tiffin tied at the ends of their clothes. At the northeast corner of this room was a black stone, the emblem of the goddess Shashti who grants children to worshippers and protects them newly married couples used to come to salute this deity. And we fancy that Sri Ramakrishna and the Holy Mother too did so. Shashti now sits in Sundaranarayana's room on the southern side of the village road that runs over the southern bank of the Punyapukur is the Modalpada, the quarter of the models, and to the south of this place is the shrine of Simhavahini one who along with two of her female companions, Chandi and Mahamaya, occupies a seat, a separate seat being provided for Mansa, the serpent goddess. The Mukherjis are the hereditary priests of all these deities. At the time that we are writing of, Simhavahini was housed in a thatch, but now she sits in a more substantial house with a cement floor and a corrugated iron sheet roof. On the southern bank of the Punyapukur is the homestead of the Banarjis. From the old brick-built temple, parlor, etc., it can be inferred that they were once in an affluent state. But now all these are in ruins. The main road of the village runs north, and south by the western side of the mother's new house and the Kali shrine, both of which are on the Punyapukur. As we proceed along this road a little northward, there stands on our left the white brick-built temple on the birthplace of the mother. Here was the ancestral home of the Mukherjis who, however, spread out southwest with the growth of the family. Their houses lie to the west of the village road and open to the east. The ancient homestead had a thatch on the eastern side, which was divided into two parts, the outer one serving as a drawing room on the south were the kitchen and husking sheds. On the southern side of the present dwellings of the Mukherjis there is another road which, starting from the main village road, runs westward along the northern bank of the Kalugede, or Kalus Pond, and the southern side of the Ghoshpada, Ghosh Quarter, to join the road to Shihar on the northern bank of the Ahir. On the extreme west of the Ghoshpada is the brick-built temple of Dharma, known as Yatrasiddhiraya, whose symbol is a small low stool with four legs, of the villages round about Jairambati, with which the memories of Sri Ramakrishna or the Holy Mother are specially associated, mention may be made of Shihar, Kolpara, Anur, and Shambhazar. At Shihar was married. Himangini Devi, the daughter of the paternal aunt of Sri Ramakrishna. It is also the birthplace of Shamasundari Devi, the mother of the Holy Mother. These common ties often attracted both the master and the mother to this village even from their childhood. The mother used to halt at Kolpara when in later days she passed through Vishnupur on her way to and from Calcutta. 
Anur is known for its shrine of the goddess Vishalakshi, on the way to which the master while still a child passed into ecstasy. At Shambhajar he once joined a Kirtana one party which sang the glory of the Lord continuously for seven days and nights. To the east of Jairambati, on the other side of Amodar, is the big village of Tajpur, to the south is Zipta which houses the landlords of Jairambati, to the southwest is Masinpur or Masnepur, and to the west is Shihar. All these villages are within a mile of Jairambati. West of Shihar is Shiromanipur which is inhabited by Mohammedans and which boasts of a police station. Jairambati, though not very far from Calcutta, is not easy of access and roads were more difficult in the times we are writing of. In those days people trudged on through village roads and open fields, frequently infested with robbers. Only the rich few could afford the luxury of carts, palanquins, etc. One of these paths passed through Kamrapukur, Armabagh and Tarkeshwar, the last place being noted for its Siva temple. Between Armabagh and Tarkeshwar lay a vast field called Telobhelo which was not safe even during daylight, so that people never crossed it alone or after nightfall. This was the shorter of the two routes usually followed by the people, the distance by it between Calcutta and Jairambati being about 60 miles, and this was the path that the Holy Mother usually trod on her way to meet the Master at Dakshineshwar. The other route through Budvan, which is a railway station, was a much longer one and withal not free from robbers. People now proceeding to Jairambati usually travel by a night train from Calcutta to Vishnupur where they can get buses which ply up to Jairambati in the dry months and up to Kotulpur in the west, with the rest of the way, a distance of about 6 miles, to be covered on foot or by a cart according to convenience. A modern all-weather road up to Jairambati is now, 1953, under construction which may ultimately be extended to Kamrapukur.1. Jairambati, though thus shut out from modern civilization, does not lack in festivities. It has its rounds of annual celebrations. In autumn there is a three-day special worship of Simhavahini, the presiding deity of the village, which draws people from all parts. Besides, other days sacred to other gods and goddesses are duly observed with much eclat. On the Shivratri day the villagers go to Shihar to offer worship at the temple of Shantinatha, Siva. There are also Kirtana songs continued for 24 hours at a stretch and rural dramas on mythological subjects which are highly appreciated and largely patronized. And above all, Jairambati has been blessed by the advent of the Holy Mother, which has converted it into a place of pilgrimage where people from all over the world come to draw inspiration. The white dome of the temple, flying its metal pendant with the Bengali word Ma, Mother, engraved on it, announces the glory of the village to distant passers-by. The temple was consecrated on the 19th April 1923, Akshaya Tritya, according to the Hindu calendar, which day is still observed and is made joyous by the presence of hundreds of devotees hailing from different places. The worship of the goddess Jagadhatri, which was initiated by the Holy Mother's mother and for which the mother herself made permanent arrangements, is also performed annually and is equally popular with the devotees. The establishment of the branches of the Ramakrishna Math and of its sister institution the Ramakrishna Mission, which cater to the spiritual, mental and physical needs of the villagers, has also enhanced the popularity of Jairambati, and easier accessibility is gradually converting it into a centre of attraction. It is a miracle that by the birth of the Holy Mother this insignificant hamlet should have leaped into such prominence within such a short time. The mother herself placed on her head the dust of this hamlet and saluted it with the Sanskrit adage Janani Janmabhumiska Swarg Adpi Gariyasi Mother and Mother Country are superior to heaven itself. One, literally, virtue or right norm, defied in Buddhism. One, I one riding on a lion, 
and epithet of Durga. 1. A particular type 01 religious songs. Sug singly or in chorus, with musical instruments like cymbals and drums to keep time. 1. This has since been extended to Kamarapukur.